All right, let's go ahead and get started. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. While we wait for more folks to filter in as they are joining, uh, additional resources as always, please visit our virtual agent at NLU community for more content and experts. We are going to you know, be sharing more information about the Utah release, although you are here for that reason, which is a good thing. Welcome. Uh, we also have an agent chat, AWA, and sidebar uh, community forum as well. So go ahead and, uh, you know, point your browser towards that. This session will be recorded. And if you're watching this on YouTube as a recording and you like what you're seeing, go ahead and click that like subscribe button. Uh, you can subscribe to the channel, subscribe to our playlist, and you'll be able to uh, see all our past academies as well as other content from the ServiceNow ecosystem. Hey, guess what? Knowledge is coming soon, May 14th to the 18th. Register for NOS today if you haven't already. I will be there. Um, some, of the other, some of my other presenter colleagues will be there. And you want to learn more about Virtual Agent, Agent Chat, Sidebar. We've got a lot of great sessions and labs and creator con uh, sessions coming in there. So if you haven't already, go ahead and register for knowledge. With that, we'll go ahead and get started. So this is what's new in Utah for conversational interfaces. Utah general availability is coming out tomorrow. So you have a one day sneak peek of everything coming out. Although if uh, for those of you who already used uh, early availability, you've probably seen some of the features already, which is great. If you have any questions, go ahead and use the Q&A feature on Zoom. And then that way we could uh, address those questions uh, you know, during the course of the webinar and we'll leave some try to leave some time at the end as well. So that, let's start with virtual agent. So the first thing I, was, I always like to talk about is a conversational interfaces homepage. So uh, we made enhancements to this in the Utah release. For example, we have new product tours on various pages. Uh, we have the new ability to change the font of your virtual agent or upload a custom font if you like for your virtual agent. And then something to call out is that NLU is now defaulted to on for net new Utah instances. So if you're upgrading, we're not going to switch you on by default, but if you are starting new uh, in Utah moving forward, NLU is defaulted to on. Uh, as always, don't forget to install the Omni Experience Standard Feature Set plugin. I know uh, some of you are, uh, if you're missing features from the CA homepage, that plugin is probably what you need to uh, install to see new features in the CA homepage. And... Um, you know, if picture's worth a thousand words, I will show a demo of, of the CI homepage in a bit, but just wanted to do a summary uh, of the new features coming soon. Teams and Slack integration enhancements. So we have a brand new messaging app integration page that's part of the conversational interfaces homepage. It looks like this, uh, a lot more, uh, you know, visually appealing, I'll just say. Uh, for Slack, for those Slack users, we now have instance uh, multi-instance support for single Slack workspace. So you can now connect multiple service on instances to a single workspace if you choose to. We have smart linking in Teams. So in Tokyo, you may recall we have smart linking in web. We've now expanded that to uh, Microsoft Teams. You can define uh, opening options for links uh, when you click on a link in Teams uh, in the virtual agent integration for Teams. And uh, we, you also can install or uh, set up uh, SSO since, uh, you know, users will likely need to be authenticated to open up those links that you display in Teams. And then finally, uh, we have automated manifest file generator. So this is used for self-configured bots for Microsoft Teams. And uh, for those customers who are on GCC, who have, uh, who are trying to connect multiple instances or are using an alternative collaboration proxy, you probably created a custom uh, self-configured bot in Microsoft Teams. Well, we made that process simpler now in the Utah release. Okay. And so with that, I'm going to start a, a demo to just a video uh, to see what all that looks like. As you can see here, you want to navigate to the conversational interfaces homepage. You just type in conversational interfaces. And you'll see that the UI is pretty similar. We did tweak some visuals. Um, and then on the right-hand side, as always, we have a bot accelerator. to uh, You can see step-by-step step on how to implement the chat bot. Let's first look at the new branding feature. So we click into branding from settings. And uh, here is an example of the product tour I talked about. You can kind of get a, 
you know, some images and some description on what you can do on this page. And other pages have product tours. And then let's click into branding. You can see, you know, colors. We've been able to do that for the longest time. Icons, this was a Tokyo release. And then here is fonts. And you can change uh, the fonts and uh, other, and we, have, we provide a variety of, of fonts of, out of box for you. And then if you want, you can also upload a, a font either from a website or upload a, a font file. And you'll be able to see a preview of that on the right-hand side. And here you can see the channels and integrations uh, page that I, I talked about. Uh, since I haven't installed Slack, you can kind of see Slack is kind of down the bottom. But here, since I've installed Microsoft Teams, I can manage it. There's my uh, tenant name. And if I go into settings, I can. this is where I can set up the uh, link authentication I told you about for SSO. Here you can also set up the, uh, the enable notifications, how to link automatically link profile, uh, and, and so on. So yeah, those are just some of the features I talked about. For, that's coming new as part of the conversation interfaces homepage. Also coming in a Utah release are proactive triggers. Now this one, this is a cool feature that folks have asked about for the longest time. You can actually now proactively send uh, context context specific messages to users, such as a greetings message or a virtual agent topic, and it'll pop up out of the widget. And you can enable this trigger. You can enable these pop-ups on large articles, catalog items, uh, portal, which as you can see in this page here, or any other page uh, that you access via URL. Okay, so this is a store app. So go ahead. So if you're interested in this, you go to the ServiceNow store and you install that Proactive Triggers plugin. And I'll show you what it looks like here. You know, if I just go to uh, the service portal real quickly. I can set up things like, you know, what is my pop-up going to say? Uh, how often it pops up? When does it pop up? And there it is right there. It's a good way to just show users, hey, you know, this is available to you. I'm over here because I know sometimes that widget can be you know, hard to spot in a portal. And then, uh, yeah, I, it shows my the text that I configured in the pop-up. And then here I have a show set up to a greeting. Although if I want to send it to a topic, I can do that as well. Okay, so we're going to go into more detail on proactive triggers and message previews in a future academy, but just wanted to show you that that's possible in the Utah release. Low code, by the way, you don't know there's very little scripting involved. Scripting is optional, but uh, I know in the past you might have done, had to do some scripting to do that, but no longer. Next in Utah is ATF for virtual agent. This was a long time customer request. We've delivered it, um, you know, at the at you know, we were initializing support, shall I say, you know, we're, we're not done yet. Uh, support for ATF, you'll be able to create test cases for virtual agent topics, and you'll be able to capture them in, in virtual agent topic test suites. And just like ATF, you can, or other applications of ATF, you can, uh, you know, run more than, you can create more than one test case per topic. You can also run more than one test case at a time, and then you can see, you know, step-by-step -step, uh, success or, or failure. Again, I'll show you a very quick demonstration of ATF. So, uh, you know, you can click manage test cases, and here you see my existing test cases, pass, fail. If I don't have a test case uh, for a topic, they're listed here, and then you can see that I can run uh, a test case just via the test button up on the top right. And there you can, uh, on the top, you now have a create test case button, and then you can run through the test case, uh, create, go through a certain branch or do a certain thing to capture that test case. And here, I'm just gonna go through this topic really quickly. And then once this topic's done, and I say, yep, this is how I want my test case to go, I can stop the test case, save it. And then what it'll do, it'll appear on my list of existing test cases, and I can go back to it and uh, run it anytime, and or uh, run multiple test cases at once, like I mentioned earlier. And there it is at the bottom. So yeah, so that's an example of, uh, or that's a demo of, of ATF for virtual agent. 
Uh, next feature, we have uh, notifications enhancements for the virtual agent. You can now configure channel by channel uh, whether you are, you know, where you want notifications to appear. You can now disable the skip button in actual notifications. And then uh, you have the ability to control the notifications prompt that users receive uh, when notifications are about to appear for the user. So just a more fine-tuned uh, control for you there. Group choice input node. So this is going to be a new input node in the virtual designer, and you'll be able to create experiences such as the screenshot you see there. Uh, you can group up those choices. Uh, you know, text and images are supported. You can do select, you can single select or multi-select. And uh, this is supported on web only in Utah, although uh, we'll soon be able to uh, support this uh, via Apple Business Chat. That's coming via a store release later on this year. We have enhancements to omnichannel callback. So this was a Tokyo release, and uh, we can now we're now enhancing it to provide uh, support for callback on uh, all our other existing conversational integration channels, such as Slack, Teams, uh, Virtual Agent, in addition to the voice channel we, we, we released in Tokyo. Uh, we now support the ability to invoke a scheduled callback at a specified date and time, in addition to the existing uh, ASAP callback functionality. And then we added support for Zoom to be used at an up, as an outbound channel for, for agents to conduct the call uh, back on. So uh, we did provide a we did release a Zoom integration out of box, in I want to say the Q4 store release. You might have seen an article about that. So then uh, you'll be able to apply that to here. Uh, there is many more miscellaneous things. Just some quick callouts. AI search results have now expanded to more than three results at a time in Virtual Agent. Uh, we've uh, and. Uh, enabled uh, SMS authentication with MFA uh, if you're using text as a channel. Uh, we are providing multiple UX enhancements in mobile virtual agent. And then a quick call out if for those of you all, you know, two people in the world perhaps still using uh, Internet Explorer 11, that is no longer supported uh, on virtual agent in the Utah release. So just a quick call out there uh, for those uh, still using Internet Explorer, I'd suggest you migrate to either Edge, uh, Firefox, or Chrome. So that's all I have. I'm not going to turn it over. Uh, so that's all I have for virtual agent, at least, uh, for Utah. I'm now going to turn it over to my colleague, Eliza, to talk about what's new in advanced work assignment. Awesome. Thank you so much, Victor. So we've got two new exciting updates for advanced work assignment. The first is that of the release of the new advanced work assignment admin console. So if you're familiar with the conversational interfaces homepage, this is very similar to that in which you can go here if you're just setting up advanced work assignment for the first time and find all the information that you need to be able to get your advanced work assignment um, set up and running. Or even if you've already implemented um, your own version of advanced work assignments, you can actually come here and discover new plugins that you might not have known existed or just get tips and tricks to kind of expand that out. So it's really neat. I recommend um, taking a look um, just, you know, to see if there's anything you might have missed while implementing. So next slide. And the next feature is something that actually affects functionality of advanced work assignment. And it's really, really exciting. These queue triggers um, are basically enabling you to, so when a user is waiting to be connected to a live agent, we are now allowing you to perform actions in that time. So you can set it up. So if the user has been waiting to be connected to a live agent for five minutes, you can send them a message saying like, hey, we're sorry about this long wait. Um, please give us another couple of minutes. You know, so you can send an, an, a message while they're waiting in queue. You can also say, hey, you know, it's been 15 minutes. How about you just go ahead and create a ticket and start that new virtual agent topic from that queue? So it's not just kind of, as some of you might have noticed, you know, while users waiting for that live agent connection, there's no way for them to exit out of that or anything unless the user does that. So now we're giving you that option to kind of give the user um, some more options in there or just give them updates to say, we still know you're here. It hasn't been disconnected or anything like that. So I really think it's a neat feature and I recommend checking it out. Um, as you can see on the screenshot here, 
we've just got them and the Q level. So take a look on your Utah instances. Now, with that said, I'll hand over to Sam to go over what's new in Agent Chat. Thank you, Eliza. So what's new in Agent Chat? We have released a cross-channel conversational history in Utah release. In the previous, we had conversational history, which just shows the agent what they have been discussed with the requester. With the cross-channel conversational history, it shows all the previous conversations the requester made through different channels like Slack, Leo, Teams, et cetera. So agent can see all those conversations within their agent chat window. Every chat that's been discussed in cross channels, it highlights in which channel the conversation happened, when it started, when it ended. It also shows what was the conversation numbers. So that helps the agent to understand what requester is looking for and how his past um, issues being resolved or if he's coming back for any unresolved issue and trying to get the help again. This conversation is available only during the live chat conversations for the agent chat. This feature is available in the agent chat plugin. Next slide, please. Let's get into what's new in sidebar for Utah release. So we have added more enhancements for sidebar. Now the participants in sidebar discussion, they can edit and delete their messages, which they have sent in those discussions. Any message that's been deleted, it shows a message, message has been deleted to all the participants within those discussions. Likewise, if any message is being edited, it, show, it tags the message showing it's been edited. So this is available, uh, this is visible for all the participants so that participants be aware that the message is being edited so that they can go and look into it again. So the feature available by right-clicking on a message and choosing to edit a message or delete a message. Next slide, please. So another enhancement is using at mentions. So now the participants can use the at and look for an a, uh, uh, look for other participants and address them to help them with any information uh, for resolving that particular issue. So when at mention with a person name mentioned, it does two things. So one is it sends a notifications, a general notifications that gets into the bell icon notifications showing you've been mentioned in sidebar. So that way they know that they've been mentioned in the sidebar. And now they can also look at, at mentions in their sidebar menu. We added a new tab mentions. If a participant is not added into those conversations, so they can add themselves into the participants with the at mention and start helping the other participants in it. Next slide, please. So for Utah, we have provided the sidebar to integrate with Microsoft Teams, which means the participants in sidebar discussions, not only adding the ServiceNow users, they can also add Teams users. And the users in Teams may not require to have their ServiceNow accounts, so they can be directly added into the participants and they can make all the conversations, like exchanging emojis, exchanging files, and uh, adding new participants from the Teams, uh, and deleting any participants from the teams. Everything will be available for the team's user and all the changes that's been made during these conversations, either in ServiceNow and also teams, it's been reflected and visible to all the participants within that group conversation. So we are providing this integration as a standard feature, whereas Microsoft will be charging a nominal fee for the exchange of these messages. So for a best practice to reduce that amount, you can also choose the list of users that you want to add into sidebar discussions while configuring the setup. With that said, let's get into a demo and see how this conversation is happening between sidebar and teams. Let's say an agent who logs, logged into his workspace and looking for an incident, is looking for the, all the incidents, 
then he picked an incident that he wants to work on. Now he clicked on the discuss button to start a sidebar discussion. And now here he's looking for a Teams user. If you observe there, the Teams user, his Microsoft ID and his icon, Teams icon is being added. It means the user is only available in Teams, not in service now. Whereas if you see the system admin, he's available in both and can be added. So the conversation is being started and a new discussion window is being added. Now I'm in Teams with Lee who can check the group chat in his Teams account. You can see who are all the participants being added there. And he can also reply to the message that he received. And here he can, he can send emojis, which will be received on the sidebar side. And now the Fred can also choose to send an emoji to the Teams user. You can also share any helpful uh, files and attachments. So the format of the attachments, it looks different in sidebar and in Teams because of the different systems and the behaviors. So now Lee received the emojis and he also received the file from the sidebar. You can also share files from Teams, which will be visible in sidebar. So that's all for the demo. We will be doing an advanced uh, sidebar Teams integration. We will be walking through what steps needs to be done for the integration, followed by the dive of a demo showing the other capabilities. So please uh, look out for a academy session that will be coming in future. Next slide, please. So with that said, thank you. And uh, let's open the Q&A. All right. So um, can, uh, Sam, we do have some questions for you about conversation history and sidebar, if you will. And uh, if you have any questions, please ask them in the Q&A channel. I see some questions in the, in, the, in the chat too. And then while we're addressing those questions, finally, I do have a poll for you. This is, the, this is a big mega poll. Uh, Basically, of all the features you've seen, which one did you like? And I'm gonna run the poll right now. I tried to include as many questions or as many of the features you saw as possible. I'm gonna launch it right now. So go ahead and fill in that poll. And uh, you have to scroll down to see some uh, of the uh, choices. Don't worry about question two, that was an error. But yeah, while we cover that poll, uh, Sam, go ahead and Take a look at some of those questions in Q&A. Sure, Victor, I'm looking at those questions. There's one question that's been asked about the conversational history. Yes, it is available in Tokyo, but that is uh, only for the previous conversations that's been happened on that particular incident alone. Whereas now we are showing the cross uh, channel conversation history, which means any conversation that happened in other, other locations like in Facebook message, message or in Twilio or in uh, Slack, all those messages are pulled into the agent chat window to show them where all the conversations been happened from that requester. And the other question is, what would be the advantage of sidebar if MS Teams is already widely in use, most folks log in to Teams and stay logged in all day long. So the sidebar Teams integration does help agents who are working in the sidebar ServiceNow uh, workspaces. And if they want to connect with Microsoft Teams who are not the users in the sidebar system, so they can look for those users and get the help from the teams. So this does help, uh, for example, an employee is looking for an help and there was an incident and sidebar uh, agent looking into the incident and wants to connect with the team's user to help him solve the issue. 
they can start the discussion and add the team's user and help him to solve it. That's, that's one use case. I'll also mention, uh, Sam, we, we will have a future academy on uh, the sidebar and Teams integration, right? Yes. Awesome. So yeah, stay tuned for that. You know, more academies on the proactive triggers, which we know is going to be a big deal, and then more academies on the, the Teams uh, sidebar integration um, coming, coming soon as well. So stay tuned for all that. Uh, yeah, go ahead. Continue with the questions. Thanks. There's another question. Can agent pull and drop screenshots into the live chat? Uh, as of now, this is uh, not available. So agent still has to click on the attach button and attach the files, but we do have plans in future uh, to bring this particular uh, feature down the line. Yeah, I think I can add, I, you, drag and drop is currently only available in the web agent workspace. Uh, nowhere else. Well, in Teams as well, just because Teams, I think, no, I don't think Teams allows, sorry, just the agent workspace uh, for, for web. So Victor, there's a question for a virtual agent. Can we have a session on submitting catalog items in a pop-up from virtual agent? Uh, yeah, we can. Uh, I'll look into how to do that, um, but that is a Tokyo release feature. And um, you'll pro you're probably looking at, again, smart links slash URL navigation for catalog items. So yeah, we can look into doing something for, for that because I know that's a big deal. We might combine it with, uh, with Teams as well now that Teams is allowing that uh, too. So yep, good call out. The next question, what are the attachments that Sidebar supports? So we support uh, uh, JPG files and uh, uh, PDF files but please make sure the file is not too big uh, while sending to the other participants, especially who are in Teams. The other one, on the Utah release notes, there is a VA designer enhancement, enhanced slot filling capability for NLU topic discovery. Would be nice to have it cover in upcoming academies. Um, okay, I, I need to look at that. You're probably right. I just haven't looked at that yet. Is it possible to exclude emojis from Teams integration? If this is with sidebar Teams integration, we do have a uh, option in the sidebar console where you have to, uh, you can deactivate emojis so that emojis won't be visible for the sidebar discussions at all. Does Microsoft Teams user require any special role or licensing to chat with sidebar users? Uh, so for this one, you do need the users uh, in your Azure system. So because you will be integrating the users in Azure with the site, uh, within sidebar and pulling all those users in the Azure system within the sidebar. So definitely what are the roles that they need require to use the teams? Those are required. Whereas on sidebar side in service now, so integration pretty much takes care pulling all those users into the system. There are no special roles required for the teams users within the sidebar. But whereas the agents and the other sidebar participants, they do need roles for the sidebar to be accessed and added as a participant. There's another question for sidebar. The at mention in sidebar, will it display whether the at mentioned user has access to the current record? So there are two things that happens when uh, used uh, at mention with the user. So if any user who needs to join into those sidebar discussions, they must have the sidebar uh, access. So right roles need to be added to that user. If they don't have access to sidebar, they can only see at mention notification in their uh, bell icon notifications where they can check with an admin and see if they really need to be added into those conversations down the line and request the access. So Victor, we have more questions and we are right at the time. So yeah, so 
Uh, we'll probably keep going for a little longer. If you guys can stay on, that'd be great. If not, you know, definitely uh, feel free to drop off. I understand time is is precious. And of course, this will be recorded. We'll just probably wrap up the, the Q&A and then call it a day. So we'll just keep going. But for those who have to drop, thank you for uh, joining. Uh, Yasmin asks, there's a new feature for VA Analytics. Yes, there is for uh, the chat transcript downloadable file. So this one's, uh, so that the, you can download chat transcripts as of, I believe, Tokyo. And that's in the uh, conversations tab. And that's simply, we just added more column data uh, for those, if, for, for conversations using Flow Designer Integrations Hub spokes. So uh, that, that's, a, that's a quick one, but uh, it's definitely there for you to try out uh, if for those of you using uh, F, uh, Flow Designer spokes in there. Uh, Anonymous asked, is, uh, is it possible to split NLU model per country instead of per language? It is manually. Um, you, you're not, you're not able to have secondary models in different countries, but you are to, allowed to have, um, different primary models per country. I, I don't recommend that option though, because you usually want to have mod, NLU models focused around, um, subject matter, right. And then rely on secondary models with language to separate, uh, to separate it that way. So um, it is possible, just not recommended as a best practice. Speaking of best practice, uh, we, if you're on San Diego, should we wait until we upgrade to Utah this spring or can we activate it now and figure it after the Utah uh, upgrade? Given that you're in San Diego, I think it's okay you can start now and then upgrade to Utah. I say that because the CI homepage is available in uh, San Diego, so you're not starting from way behind. So uh, whichever gets you closest to being able to start up a, a, you know, a trial run, right, or do some piloting would be would be best. And then uh, you can then skip Tokyo and go straight to Utah if you want. And then a lot of the UI in the say homepage and stuff will will be there or, or at least will be familiar for you. Again, just don't forget that um, uh, that Omni experience standard feature set uh, store app. Cool. Um, Anonymous asked, do we have a feature where we can provide language dropdown and the topics will be translated in that language just for virtual agent session and not update users language? Um, I don't know what we mean by that, but I'll tell you what we do have. Uh, in, in the virtual agent designer, you, you are able to manage different languages uh, for topics. And then in the Tokyo release, uh, you may have heard that we do have dynamic translation now. So uh, managing uh, languages for topics and NLU models is a lot easier now. So uh, I would, I'd recommend you take a look at that. And then last question, uh, how to have virtual agent dashboard split per country? Uh, currently not available, but it's a good question. Uh, something we can uh, take back to. And in fact, uh, one of our analytics product managers is currently on the call. So a uh, good call for him to to take back to his his team for further consideration. And then uh, Katie asked a sidebar question. I think Sam will just uh, leave this to you and then we'll call it a day. Yes, looking into it. So I missed most of the meeting. Can sidebar be used for example, to leave messages for live chat agents in the event there are no live chat agents available? Uh, as of now, we don't have this capability as we uh, look sidebar discussions as a, uh, uh, I mean, as an advanced discussions for the agents to connect with other agents and the subject matter experts to get the help resolving the instance or the cases. We'll definitely take this as a feedback and pass it to the team and see if we hear more from other customers, we will uh, bring it in future. Okay, so with that, uh, that's it. Thank you, everyone, for joining our Conversational Interfaces Academy, what's new in Utah. As I stated, this will be uh, recorded and uploaded to YouTube in the coming days, so stay tuned for that. You'll be able to share that with anyone who missed this session. And then, of course, we are back another two weeks for more Conversational Interfaces goodness. Thank you, everyone. Have a good rest of your morning or a good rest of your day. Thank you.